Shema o Israel, Shabbat Shalom, Ami Be'esaris Davi, and my Isha Baki is here with us as well. Before we go any further, we're going to have the blowing of the shofar. Then we're going to have our opening song in which we don't own the rights to. And then we're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance. And then we're going to have a song uh, by Sister Baki, all in that order. Praises 
to ya. Hallelujah. Sing praises to ya. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, ya. Hallelujah. We worship you, ya. Hallelujah. We worship you, ya. Hallelujah. 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 Our first scripture this afternoon is from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. It is written, Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. It is written, He that turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is our Torah portion from Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17. It is written, and else spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh El, which have brought thee forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other El before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh El, am a jealous El. Visit then the iniquity of the Abbas upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yah thy El in vain, for Yah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yah thy El. In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, thy man ye bed, thy maid ye bed, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and holiday. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy El gives thee. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not lust after thy neighbor's house. You shall not lust after thy neighbor's Isha. Nor is man he bed, nor is maid he bed, nor is ox, nor is ass nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to uh, kneel and go into prayer. And our prayer exhortation is from Daniel chapter 9 and also Psalm 30. I'm going to face his holy oracle and spread forth my hands towards the Most High. Father Yah, as we spread forth our hands unto thee, kneeling before thy throne of mercy and grace, we glorify you, praise you, and thank you for life, health, and strength. Praise and thank you, Father, for how you kept us during the weekend, blessed us during the weekend, allowed us to enter into your rest. You're invited into this rest, Father. We ask, Father, that as we invoke your name, your ruach, and your word, Father, that you would Come and commune and inhabit the presence of we, your people. We ask that you would commune with me and my Isha this day and transform us 
and to instruments of thy will and thy purpose. Forgive us all of any sin, any shortcoming. As we look to you from Daniel 9 verses 4 through 19 that says, O Yah, the great and dreadful El, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy ebeds, the Narvids, and spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and to our abbas, and to all the people of the land. O Yah, lawfulness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces at this day. To the men of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, and they have trespassed against thee. O Yah, to us belong confusion of face, to our kings, our princes, and to our abbas, because we have sinned against thee. To Yah El belongs mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against them. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yah El to walk in this Torah, which he set before us by his Ebes, the Narvis. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy Torah, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us in the oath that is written in the Torah of Moshe, the Ebed El, because we've sinned against you, Yah. And you have confirmed your words which you spake against us, and against thou judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven have not been done, as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the Torah of Moshe, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before Yah El, that we might turn from our iniquities, and understand Yah's truth. Therefore have Yah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for Yah our El is lawful in all his works which he do, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Yah our El, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Mitzrayim with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Yah, according to all thy lawfulness, we beseech thee. Let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our others, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our El, hear the prayer we thy ebeds in these supplications, and cause our faces shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for your sake. O our El, incline thy ear and hear, open thy eyes, and behold our desolations. And the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our lawfulnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Yah, hear, O Yah, forgive, O Yah, hearken and do, defer not for thy own sake, O our El, for thy city and we thy people are called by thy name. We ask, Father, right now that you would be merciful unto us, Father. As we look to you, Father, from Psalm 30 that says, We will extol thee, O Yah, for thou hast lifted us up, and hast not made our foes to rejoice over us. O Yah, our El, we cried unto thee, and thou hast healed us. O Yah, thou hast brought up our souls from the grave, thou hast kept us alive, that we should not go down to the pit. Sing unto Yah, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endures but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but Simca comes in the morning. And in our prosperity we said we shall never be moved. Yah, by thy favor thou hast made our mountain to stand strong. Thou did hide thy face, and we was troubled. We cried unto thee, O Yah, and unto Yah we made supplication. What profit is there in our blood when we go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Yah, have mercy upon us. Yah, be thou our helper. Thou hast turned for us our mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off our sackcloth and girded us with gladness. To the end that our glory may sing praise unto thee, and not be silent, O Yah, El, we will give thanks unto thee forever. We thank and praise you, Father, for how you just been blessing us, Father, and kept us alive during the course of this week. Allowed us to arise this morning seemingly in our right minds. 
with breath in our bodies, activity in our limbs. And as we invoke your ruach, your word, and your name to go before us in the course of this day, we ask, Father, that you would be merciful unto us, Father, and allow us to become rejuvenated. Those who need your favor after this Shabbat, Father, meet them with your favor as never before. You know what many of us pray for in our secret prayer closets. I ask, Father, that you would stir up your wisdom and pour it out upon us. Unite our hearts to fear thy name, Father. And we ask that you will allow the signs of the believer to follow us, Father, as we are about your business. We ask that you would empower us to be a blessing unto the widow, the widowers, the fatherless, the oppressed and poor. Empower us to be a blessing unto those going through hunger and homelessness, eviction, foreclosure, turn off notices, and repossession. You see each and every family represented here, Father. Meet them at their point of need right now, Father. And we ask that you will have mercy upon our souls, because many of us say we are Israel, Father. But many of those saying that they are Israel don't keep your covenant. We ask, Father, that you would Put your fear in us, Father, so that we'll hearken unto you and, and not to another. We ask this this day in Yeshua's name we pray. Hallelujah. I praise and thank the Most High for allowing us to get through this week that just passed because it's been a real interesting week for all of us. I don't know if you've been uh, uh, watching events around us and all of this. I'm still trying to figure out what's supposed to happen on April 3rd. You know, today I found out was April 3rd. All right? I don't know. But I just know that the most High is in charge no matter what. The more that we let him take back control of his weather, the seasons and the times, that's more control that he has and that we're actually showing our humility unto him. A lot of people are trying to dictate the control over the weather for the times and the seasons with uh, literature that you can't find in scripture. Find a whole bunch of talking. Let the scripture talk. Alright? Not you. I don't want to hear from you. Alright? Had to uh, ask one, one street, I don't know what he was doing. He was yelling a bunch of obscenities or whatever in Greenville downtown. Called himself preaching on the Shabbat day. And he asked me a question, I asked him a question. So they go to the scripture and start reading. And as dude was reading a couple passages of the verse, his buddy kept stopping him and calling himself breaking it. Whoa, 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 time out. Let the scriptures speak. I ain't new to this. A lot of you all fell for a lot of commentary as for explanation uh, uh, as to why you're doing what you're doing. Get back to the word of the Most High. Our title hasn't changed. This is the last day of this title. Whose faith will make you whole? Since we've been in this on faith, we found out some things about faith that many didn't know that faith worked by love and also when Mark, what was that, 1125, something like that. Uh, 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 a lot of people don't understand that uh, uh, faith worked by forgiveness as well. If you don't forgive, the Most High can't forgive you, all right? Very important that we be mindful of this. And our walk. There are a lot of things going on round about us. I say keep true Israel in prayer. All of those that are covenant keepers. All of those that have their faith in the most high. All of those that trust in the most high. And trust in most importantly his word. One thing's for certain, two things for sure. The same way Instagram and Facebook and any other social media uh, 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 will repost your memories from last year on this day last year. 
Well, the heavens is taking notice, record, and witness of the things that transpire on the seventh day with us here at Shemal Israel on the seventh day, the fourth day, and every day of our lives. So some of you all are actually thinking you're getting away with things and uh, 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 you're able to go through life without repenting. Well, I'm here to bust your bubble. Alright? I'm going to make you very uncomfortable with the truth. Instead of sitting there coddling you and rocking you to sleep with lies. A lot of people are falling for the lies. Scripture tells us how even the very elect of Israel, Yeshua, <laughs> will be fooled. I hope and pray that you all are actually looking to the scripture for the sustenance of your life and not to man. Many of you all are so submitted to man that the Most High can't do nothing with you. So he just scoots you over in the category of the reprobates along with the, repro the rest of the reprobates. And that's sad. We as the children of the Most High got to really, really, really get our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and, soul, and souls in tune with the Most High's word. We don't have a long day today. We got three chapters, 151 verses, but it's a beautiful thing. Because we're going back into the topic. Whose faith is going to make you whole? Our story, our story today starts in Luke chapter 17 at verse 1. That's our first scripture. Luke 17 verse 1 and we will be reading from 1 through 37. Our second scripture is Luke 18 and we will be reading verses 1 through 43. And our last scripture for today is Luke chapter 22, and we will be reading verses 1 through 71. Luke 17 verse 1 speaks on this wise. Then said Messiah to the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone was hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy ox trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day turn again to thee saying, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto you, Messiah, increase our faith. <laughs> Verse 6 says, And Messiah said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having an ebed plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, by and by, when he has come in from the field, go and sit down to me? And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Do he to think that, that Ebed because he did the things that were commanded him, I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable Ebeds, we have done that which was our duty to do. Verse 11 in Luke 17, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Yeshua, Master, 
have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the coin. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified Elohim and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Yeshua answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to Elohim, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of Elohim should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of Elohim comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of one part under heaven shines unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his death. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they made eaches, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, <coughs> excuse me. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remembers Lot's Isha, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in, in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, master? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Hallelujah. Before somebody's minds enter into perversion, let's go back up to verse 34 and 35. 34, Luke 17, 34 tells you, I tell you in that night that there shall be two men in one bed. Look up that word bed in the scriptural Greek. It means couch. All right? So just to get the perversion away from Israel. All right? It shall be two men on a couch. One shall be taken, the other left. 35 says two women shall be grinding together. That was when they had the little bowl and the little thing grinding up the wheat and grinding up the herbs and all of that. Alright? It ain't nothing sexual or nasty about it. Alright? We got to get that real clear real quick. Alright? But as we look at Luke chapter 17, <laughs> verse 1 and 2 is very, very plain. I recently moved from a city that... I was in and I used to get a lot of requests in my neighborhood office 
from it seemed like uh, apostolic grandmothers and great grandmothers, little old ladies. They would come down to the office, tell me stories about how they need help for their granddaughters being molested or the great granddaughters being molested by uh, 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 the daughter's boyfriend. Well, I'm here to submit to you this day. Some of you all need to take a stand against the pedophiles and the rapists. Alright? Messiah put these words out there in Luke 17, 1 and 2. And these words are read. 1 and 2 says, Then said Messiah to the disciples, It is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Somewhere along the line, men of Israel, women of Israel, people of Israel, we got to take a stand in, in the process of taking that stand. We may have to stand for somebody that can't fight for themselves. <coughs> Somebody that can't really uh, uh, defend themselves. A lot of you all may not understand this, but somewhere along the line, we got to be some of our so-called neighbors, brothers, keepers. Very important, Israel, that you be reminded of that. So that you yourself will know what's expected of you Especially if you're walking down the street seeing somebody dragging somebody into a car and all of a sudden you get this urge to want to help. It's very important that you be mindful of that. That that urge is coming based out of the root of the Ruach from the scripture to help somebody that they can't help themselves. As we look further here in Luke chapter 17, I like verse uh, 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 5. Because verse 5, it, it, it tells a lot of things about a lot of people. Luke 17, 5 says, And the apostles said unto Messiah, Increase our faith. Some of you are wondering who are the apostles in that time, and these are the same apostles that were talked about in Matthew chapter 10. Look at Matthew chapter 10 verses 2, 3, and 4. Matthew chapter 10 verse 2, 3, and 4 says, Now the uh, names of the twelve apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus and Labaius whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite and Yehuda Iscariot who also betrayed him. Now, when you want to start taking titles out of this book and calling yourself these titles in this day and time just understand how you're using that title because many people are blaspheming the word of the most high by trying to call themselves apostles notice that these apostles in Matthew chapter 10 verse 2 and the one spoken about here in Luke 17 5 they're one and the same people and they are the same people that walk with a living Messiah, that talk with a living Messiah, that ate with a living Messiah. Some of them betrayed them and denied the living Messiah. Now who in this day, 2021, literally walk with Messiah? That's why the writer of Revelation, the revealing, revealed what he revealed when he was talking about, you saw those that call themselves apostles, but are not, 
but found them liars. Don't get mad at me. The word saying it. It ain't Zai saying it. It's the word. You got mad, you want to get mad with somebody, you get mad with the most high. I'm just tired of Israel falling for wood and nickels. Somebody giving them three dollar bills and they walking around cheesing from ear to ear with a big Kool-Aid smile. And all the time they got nothing thinking they got something. It's very important, Israel. Very important. That you do not be moved in these days and times by these big name titles. Because at the end of the day, our judgment is predicated upon one of two things. Either we're going to hear, Well done, my good and faithful Ebed, enter thou into my rest, or depart from me, you wicked Ebed, for I know you not. Many are calling, claiming to be more raids and ministers and all of this and all of that. I'm here to submit to you. A tree is known by its fruit. How is you going to acquire yourself any of these titles but in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and every other name that you're calling on, you trying to do these miracles? How is that possible? How is that happening? All right? Let's get real clear about some things here. All right? The apostles' name were written in Matthew chapter 10. Verses 2 through 4, and these are the same apostles here in Luke 17, 5, that asked Messiah to increase our faith. Messiah said unto him in verse 6, if ye had faith, that word faith is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I and it means persuasion, credence, and conviction as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamore tree, Be thou picked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea. And listen to the last part. And it should obey you. That should is predicated upon how well uh, 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 you have aligned yourself in scripture. If faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, then why so many different dates for one new year, one Passover? I'm going to tell you why so many different dates. If faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, the word told us when the Most High's new year and Passover was. And if you did it according to the word, Yesterday evening should have been the first day of the Most High's second Passover for a lot of you all. But a lot of you all didn't do it according to the word. So now you get somebody else's Passover. And people don't want to hear this. If faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, uh, we've already submitted the events. Of every scriptural month for 12 months. There's only 12 new moons. Only 12. If you didn't read them, that's on you. If you didn't research them, that's on you. If you didn't pray and meditate on that word and ask the Ruach to lead and guide you into all truths, that's on you. You did what you thought you was doing, listening to somebody else. But again, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. This word. Not a whole bunch of conjecture, menagerie, and shenanigans somebody spewing out their mouth, dressed like they ready for Shakespeare in a park. Y'all look crazy. Don't come at me with that. This thing has been submitted for the past two, three years. You can go on our YouTube or go through our page and check each scriptural month. I'm, I'm going to submit one more time. The first scriptural month had 45 events 
And scripture does not mention that you have to wait for some corn, some barley, or something else. Scripture don't say wait for it. And anybody telling you about the barley, well, Exodus 9 said it caught on fire. It was destroyed or whatever. All right? To be clear, that's all it was. And ain't telling you use that this side show be given as a token unto you when the barley and the corn and the good barley is da 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 da. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. I see why a lot of you all got faith. You ain't got faith. You got the faithless leading the faithless. You got those still with the remnants of churchy and leading people in quote unquote so called truth. We got to make a distinction, and I'm praying that's in the most high to make that distinction of we that honor and keep his covenant, guard his covenant, versus those who keep some man's covenant. It's a difference. If faith come out here and ain't here by the word, we only talking about faith here, all right? Don't throw stones at me. You found a book, the ghost speller. Abraham or the ghost spell of Zacchaeus and all of this. So what? Moshe was given the ordinance for all of our covenant with the Most High. Let's drop down to uh, Luke 17 verse 19. Remember now Verse 11 says, It came to pass as he went into Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. As he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Yeshua, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests, the Cohen. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorifying Elohim, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Yeshua answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? 18 says, They are not found that return to give glory to Elohim, save this stranger. Verse 19, very plain. And Messiah said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith, thy credence, thy convincing within thyself, thy uh, uh, conviction, thy uh, persuasion has made thee whole. You see, you get it now? We still yet to come across anything that says because you believe in me, you are whole. Messiah is dealing with this on a real personal level, one on one with each one. And keep telling them, thy faith has made thee whole. A lot of you all are wondering, well, how can you do what the apostles asked in verse 5? Luke 17, 5 said, The apostles said unto Messiah, Increase our faith. Let me show you how you can do that. Let's run back here to the back of the book right quick. We're going into uh, 2 Peter, chapter 1. Going to 2 Peter, chapter 1, read verses 1 through 21. But, key in on verses 5 through 8 it says and beside this given all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience Elohimliness and unto Elohimliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. 8 says for if these things be in you and abound they make 
you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge, in your discovery, your investigation of Yeshua HaMashiach. Very important. Alright? So if you want to know how uh, 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 they ask and increase our faith in Luke 17, 5, well, start adding to your faith. Because it's going to take faith to show brotherly kindness and charity in these days and times. Alright? Let's keep it moving. Our next stop this afternoon is from uh, Luke chapter 18. And we're going to read from verses 1 through 43. It is written. And Messiah spoke another parable unto them to this end, that men ought always pray and not to faint, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not Elohim, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not Elohim, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she worry me. And Yeshua said, hear what the unjust judge says, and shall not Elohim avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were lawful and despised others. Uh-oh. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, Elohim, I thank thee that I am not as other men, are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote on his breath, saying, Elohim, be mercy to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them, but when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Yeshua called them unto hence and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of Elohim. Truly I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Elohim as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Yeshua said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is Elohim. Notice thou the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy Abba and thy honor. And he said, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Now when Yeshua heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackst thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. When he heard this, he was very soft, sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Yeshua saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of Elohim? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Then Kepha said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Messiah said unto them, Truly I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or Isha, 
or children for the kingdom of Elohim's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the novice concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the heathen, and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spit it on. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, Neither knew they the things which were spoken. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Eureka, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Yeshua of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Yeshua, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his shalom. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Yeshua stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Master, that I may receive my sight. And Yeshua said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying Elohim. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto Elohim. Hallelujah. Let's go back into chapter 18. We got a few things going on here. Chapter 18. Let's look at verses 2 to 5. Well, we could go from 1 to, one to 5. And Messiah spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not Elohim, neither regarded man. Look at the judge position. Look at his mindset. He didn't fear Elohim. He ain't had no regard for the man. For any man on his, the, the, that come to his court. Alright. Look at verse 3. Luke 18 verse 3. And there was a widow of that city. And she came unto him saying. Avenge me of my adversary. Watch verse 4. But remember what verse 2 said. The man. The judge didn't fear Elohim. Nor regarded any man. 18 and 4 says and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though I fear not Elohim nor regard man yet because this widow troubles me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she worry me look after you pray for that thing Start praising the Most High for that thing. Praising him, thanking him as, as if you already got. And you talk about confusing the enemy. What do you mean I praise and thank you for this car and all of this? Well, you still got a bus pass. I praise you and glorify you, Father, for this car. You know, you done prayed for it. He already know what you stand in the need of long before you ask. Here's a hit, though. Some of you all may not understand that it's hard for some people to pray for natural, carnal, temporal things of this world because they're natural, carnal, and temporal. But these are the very things that are going to aid you in your mission if you're about our Heavenly Father's business. So it's kind of like an even place dealing with a necessity Versus just a luxurious one. Alright. Start praising the most high. After you pound the heavens. In prayer for whatever is your petition is. Start praising him for his will to be done. Daily. Till you see it manifest. It's very important that we. 
as his people continue to move according to the Most High's election and purpose. I ask that everyone continue to uh, uh, walk according to the Most High's election and purpose and that we all move each and every way according to his word. I know some of you on Facebook and just lost, but that's why we record the backup. Okay. <laughs> I hope and pray that you all stay focused on praising the Most High for whatever it is you're asking for. Whatever it is is going on in the midst of your life. We, once you begin to make your praise and your uh, uh, supplication, begin to praise Him afterwards. Very important. All right. And that was Luke 18 verses 1 through 5. As we look further at Luke 18. Let's look at verse 8. Verse 8 asks a very profound question at the end. It says, I tell you that he will avenge. Talking about the Most High will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. I don't know about you all, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. So in essence, the Son of Man is looking for the word in you on this earth. Don't ever drop his word for something somebody else made up. You can't even verify in scripture. Some of you all are going to become going to be called hypocrites because of your weekly profession. You do all this research, you do all of this organizing of information and all this for your job, but when it comes down to your salvation, you do nothing. You sit there, somebody urinating and defecating on you, they tell you it's snowing and raining. You sit there, okay. Can't be that way, people. We got to figure out what we saying and doing. Told you I, I, I like Luke chapter 18. Let's look at verses 10 through uh, 14. 10, uh, 9 says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were lawful and despised others. There are some in Israel in this day and time who are, 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 are so pharisaical high minded now the word pharisee is nothing it means nothing but a keeper of the law alright <laughs> that's all it means but some are so high minded and think that they're so heavenly minded the most high see them as no earthly good because here it, it, in verse 9 it says he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were lawful and despised others. How are you going to be lawful and despise others? When the law tells you in the uh, uh, statutes and uh, 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 the uh, uh, commandments. Those things are telling you that, you know, about the stranger and your brother and your neighbor. How you want to despise others, but yet and say you, you're, you're keeping the covenant of the Most High. I beg to differ. Alright? But it says, verse 10, Luke 18, 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Elohim, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Those works ain't going to get you into the kingdom. Those works ain't going to have you enter into the Most High's rest because a lot of people are so centered on them and theirs. 
Listen to how that Canaanite mentality run through Israel. All right? There are a lot of people that have that mentality when you look up uh, 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 the Canaanite and the Jebusite from Exodus 23. Look them up and you will be able to profile them according to how they're written in the uh, 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 how it's written about them in the Strong's lexicon. Very important people, we got to figure out what are we saying, what are we doing, how we moving, how we living. Are we going to really take the word of the Most High and, and, and apply it to our lives or are we going to literally sit on the word of the Most High and deal with it deceitfully and have others tripped up and tripped out because we hypocritically self-righteous. Messiah just told him back here in uh, 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 what was that? He just, oh, right here, 1818, all right, 1819, Messiah just told him, and Messiah said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is Elohim, that's it. We can't sit around thinking that we're thinking of ourselves more than we ought to, because a lot of people are actually doing that, and actually believe that that there's some great uh, a person in their own minds and in their own eyes, in their own hearts, their own spirit and soul. So we got to figure out what we saying and what we doing. As we looking at this even more, the greatest prayer in all scripture is in Luke 18 verse 13. Verse 13 says, The publican standing afar off will not lift so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, Elohim, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's the best prayer anybody can pray right now, especially for those who are listening to everybody else, talking about the keeping of these holy days and, and all of this and all of that. I'm going to tell you some real good stuff, people. Don't get tricked, because even the very elect, Scripture say we'll be fooled in these times. Very important that you don't get tricked. You don't end up in uh, 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 following somebody when you should have been following the word of the Most High. But no. See, a lot of men deal with that word of the Most High deceitfully. Let's look at uh, 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 verse 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Who's going? When are you going to humble yourself to the Most High Word? You ain't humbling yourself to me. It ain't no point of me saying, "Oh, see, I told you I was right." No. Ain't no point of me being right. The word is right. Let every man be a liar and the most high be true. All right? The word. That's where we got to keep this at and continue to keep our focus on no matter what's going on around the us. All right? Um, I like 17. Luke 18, verse 17. Truly I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Elohim as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. We need the innocence and the humility of a little child to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. I don't know what you're doing, how you're doing it, but whoever is showing you scripture, make sure they show you this part, and if they ain't showing you this part, then you might have to run from them. It goes on to say in Luke chapter 18, let's take a look at verses 28 to 30. All right? 28 and 30 speak some very, very profound things. Verse 28 says, Then Kepha said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Messiah said unto them, Truly, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, 
or parents or brethren or Isha or children for the kingdom of Elohim's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time. Well, what? I just left my family. I left my, my, my parents. I left my house. I left this. I left that. Verse 30 said, Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time? And then it goes on to say in verse 30, And in the world to come, life everlasting. Some of you all have been sitting stagnated, dealing with grown rusty children. And it's time for you to separate yourself because the Most High has called you higher in His Word. To a whole nother level in this word. Some of you all really got to leave some of them that you're uh, 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 around. Your parents. Leave that home. Some of you got, got, got brethren. Got wives. Got husbands. Got children. Leave them for the kingdom of the most high sake. Lay them for some rusty old. Demon bound, demon filled individual telling you you out of order. No, you're not. We just read it what last Sabbath for about, and if uh, 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 a man put away his wife and marries another, he commits adultery. And if the wife puts away the husband and, and marries another, she commit adultery. Huh? Yeah, the wife. A lot of people don't want you reading this book for yourself. Read it and write down your questions if you have questions. And ask the Ruach to lead and guide you into all truths. And maybe one of the truths of your question answering is to bump into somebody like me that don't deal with the word deceitfully. There's plenty of us out here that don't deal with the word uh, deceitfully. But 28 and 30 to 30 is, is very, very important for us to be able to watch because a lot of people think that just because you gave up everything and, and, and chose the, the kingdom of the Most High and to follow the word, that you will end up a pauper, naked, bound, stricken, and all of that. Nah. 30 says, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. So, if you worrying about being lonely after you leave your parents, being lonely after you walk away from them and leave the house, leave your husband, leave your Isha, leave them demon bound uh, people. And see what the Most High got for you. A lot of people don't want to step out on faith. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go over there, Luke 18.42. Another one needing to receive their sight. The Messiah only spoke a few words. Receive thy sight. Thy faith has made the whole. Nine words. It's based upon him following what he was supposed to follow, what we supposed to follow in Isaiah 58, the preparation time. The time of having to fast and pray so we can become empowered. Our last scripture today. It's in Luke chapter 22. We're going to read from verses 1 through 71. It is written. Now the feast of our lemon bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief Cohen and the scribes saw how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Hashatan and Yehuda, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief Cohen and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. 
And he promised and saw opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Some of you all read the commandments in Exodus chapter 20, thou shalt not kill. Well, if you read it that way, you ain't going to kill the Passover. Alright? If you say thou shalt not murder, well, back then, they killed the Passover. <laughs> Alright? Verse 8. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where will thou that we prepare? He said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master said unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Remember Luke chapter 10, excuse me, Matthew chapter 10, verses 2, 3, and 4. All of the names mentioned there, that was here at the uh, Passover with Messiah. So if you have having people around you calling themselves apostles, ask them when did they have Passover with the Messiah. Alright? Very important. Alright? Verse, uh, verse 12. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. They went and found as he said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. When the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. And he took and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of Elohim shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you. But behold the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise mastership over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that do serve. For whether is greater he that sits at meat, or he that serves, is not he that sits at meat, but I am among you as he that serves. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Abba have appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And Messiah said, Simon, Simon, behold, Hashatan hath desired to say to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, Strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Master, I am ready to go with thee both in the prison and to death. And he said, I will tell thee, Kepha, the cock shall not throw this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou know me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse, script, shoes, lack ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that have a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script, and he that have no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. 
For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me having it. And they said, Master, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. And he came out and went as he went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Ah, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but thine be done. And there it appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And we arose from prayer and was come to his disciples. He found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and play. pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spoke, behold, a multitude and he that was called Yehuda, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Yeshua to kiss him. But Yeshua said unto him, Yehuda, betray thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw that would follow, they said unto him, Master, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the ebed of the high cone and cut off his right ear. And Yeshua answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Yeshua said unto the chief cone and captains of the temple and the zakane which were come out to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staffs. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high Cohen's house, and Kepha followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, they were set down together. Kepha sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Kepha said, Man, I am not. <laughs> and about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow was with him. For he is a Galilean. And Kepha said, Man, I know not what thou said. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And Messiah turned and looked upon Kepha. And Kepha remembered the word of Messiah. How he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Kepha went out and wept bitterly. And the men that held Messiah mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the Zakana, the people, and the chief Cohen, and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Are thou Messiah? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of Elohim. Then said they all are thou then the Son of Elohim. And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. Hallelujah. It's a lot of things going on in this chapter. Alright? It's very important that we understand that we as the people of the Most High are going to go through some things. And it might be the hour of your, the Yehuda Iscariot in your life. The Judas Iscariot in your life to do something to elevate you to a whole nother level. But I would like to say that as we're looking at this chapter, please, people, please. In verse 32 in Luke 22, 
Messiah said, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Very important that we remember that a prayer already went up for Kepha in his day and time that his uh, 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 faith failed not. And we in this day and time need to take this same page and apply it to our life. Our, this same book, Luke 22, 32, the same verse and apply it unto our lives. Asking the Most High to allow our faith not to fail. Some of you all think uh, uh, because you've been in churchianity and you know the Most High is love and all of this and all of that. When you read in Luke 22, 35 to 38, didn't uh, 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 Messiah told his disciples to sell their garments and buy a sword. It's very important that we do something of the sort in our lives to make sure that we're prepared. Always remember we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Alright? This is the sword some of you all really need to get. Get a regular old KJV. I mean in the uh, 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 80s and 90s I heard he was a black man. But now, as of late, I heard he was a homosexual. I don't know. I just know that it's enough word in here for us to follow to continue on a set-apart walk. Okay? I I, I want to submit that we got it into, into prayer. Alright? Very important. Let's take a look at uh, verse 42. Messiah was, was going through in him. And he literally prayed this prayer in uh, Luke 22, 42. Abba, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. We need to remember that. Because somewhere along the line, somebody's still thinking about it, think it's all about them and what they want and how they want what they want when they want what they want. All right? Very important. Let's drop down to Luke 22 50. It says, And one of them smote the ebed of the high cohen and cut off his right ear. Now, a lot of people say that those disciples wasn't. You know, bout it, bout it back in them days. Scripture don't say that that man took that man ear off. Scripture said that the man right ear got cut off. Alright? Very important that we remember in this day and time that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Alright? Very important that we apply that unto our lives. We hope and pray that as we're going through this, that your faith is being uh, stirred up to a whole nother level. We also hope and pray that as we gather in the Most High Name, that we all remember that we are all brethren. All right? A lot of you all are, are in awe over title mongers. Don't be. You know? The only title worth having is uh, that title of Ebed when he says, uh, 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 well done, my good and faithful Ebed. Very important. I hope and pray that these situations that we're going through and reading through actually are, are, are helping you to elevate your faith. And now we're getting ready to pray and I'm asking the Most High to Allow me and my Isha faith not to fail and yours as well. Let's pray. Father Yah, as we kneel before thy throne of mercy and grace, spreading forth our hands unto thee. We ask, Father, that you would remember we your children and 
Your word shows us that faith come by hearing and hearing by your word. We also ask, Father, that you will allow our faith not to fail. And you will allow, uh, would allow us the necessary forgiveness and love to operate our faith. We ask right now that you would sanctify us in thy word, for thy word is truth. Allow us all to apply this word unto our lives, especially those who are about your business, so that we can bring forth fruit unto thy glory. I ask that you would bless each and every one and those on the other social media that cut out on us. We're glad that we have a venue that will record the whole thing. We ask this, Father, that you would continue to bless us as we bless you and move according to your election and purpose in the midst of our lives. We ask this in Yeshua name we pray. Hallelujah. You all be blessed and be safe. May the Most High keep you until we meet again. Shabbat Shalom.